Hi everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you five selections for tomorrow's horse racing action. Now before we get into them I quickly just want to reflect on how our tips performed today. In the end it wasn't our finest hour on our YouTube channel as both our selections were fairly disappointing. My nap the Gene Genie at Cheltenham ran okay but could only finish in eighth place. We obviously advised with the extra places Sky better paying six places in the race and like I say could only finish in eighth place he was a bit outpaced at a key point during the race because he had been traveling quite well I thought for the majority of it and I thought he was going to give us a good run for our money but yeah he just got outpaced uh, when they were just turning the corner and just starting to go up the hill but if you actually go back and watch the replay and uh, watch the camera after after the line he actually rallied very strongly so yeah um, a bit frustrating there but yeah that's the way it goes Pendleton as well he was very disappointing I think he only beat one rival home in the end I just think the blinkers lit him up too much he was very free but quite keen and in the end he just wasn't able to sustain his effort so yeah fairly disappointing day all around but it's been a good week and fingers crossed we can be back amongst the winners for you tomorrow now like I said at the top of the video I've got five selections for tomorrow's racing and we're going to be going to Newbury for the first one of them where we go into the 125 it's a nursery handicap and I'm going to go here with my next best with a horse called Cashew for James Doyle and George Bay. Currently available at 13 to 2 with Bet365 at the moment and I'm going to recommend a one point win bet here. Now this horse Cashew does look fairly exposed against some of these rivals tomorrow. She's rated 83. However, she's really the only one in this field that has proven on the ground. It's currently described at, um, at Newbury as heavy and she's going to relish those conditions and a lot of her rivals won't like it at all and if you were watching the racing today at Newbury it was quite testing ground so it's going to take some getting and all of Cashew's best form arguably has come when there's been ease in the ground so she's going to really appreciate this tomorrow I think she actually ran better than the bare form may suggest when she uh, finished fifth in a listed race at York earlier this month I think that was a good effort because if you go back and watch the replay she looks outpaced at a crucial point but then she rallies on again very strongly she hit the line fairly strong and yeah she she showed a really good attitude that day now I'm looking in here tomorrow got the likes of Gisborne uh, reposing from that run at York and he's going to have to give her seven pounds tomorrow and he hasn't proved himself on the ground quite a few of the other horses at the top of the betting i'm not sure they're certain to like it their breeding suggests that they won't be happy on it or their other form has come on quicker conditions i just think casual here is a little bit overpriced and yes she might not have the sexy appeal compared to some of their other uh, rivals in the race but i think a 13 to 2 she's been underestimated here by the market if i was pricing her up i think she should be around about three to one kind of chance i think she's going to be there or thereabouts tomorrow and for me i think she's got solid credentials so yeah she's going to be my first tip of the day in the 125 at newbury we then go with an extra tip in the 145 at Cheltenham and I'm going to take a chance here with a horse called Small Bad Bob for Mitch Bastion riding for Paul Henderson currently available at 11 to 1 with Sky Bet who are offering six places on this race I'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here now this horse you might remember we put up earlier this month when he won very easily I thought at uh, Fontwell he did the job well that day beating some uh, fair horses you know and yeah I think he's got a lot more to offer he's given six pounds uh, by the handicapper for that success but I think he could easily do have a few pounds to play he won his uh, previous start to that Fontwell at Newton Abbott so he's bid in for the hat trick in this contest tomorrow he's been going fairly well since he transferred over the RSC to Paul Henderson's yard and I just think there's a little bit more to come from his mark I think the track will suit to his strengths he won't mind the ground at all. He's got quite a few things in his favour tomorrow. Obviously, yes, some of the horses at the top of the bear and maybe have um, better things down the line you you would be hoping in their career with the likes of Paul Nichols' this horse. But yeah, there's quite a few that I think you can get at the top of the market. And I think Small Bad Bob, he's done nothing wrong but just improve. And I, I think he could take another step forward tomorrow. And he's certainly uh, been uh, missed by the market here. And I think Small Bad Bob does uh, represent a good bit of each way value there. So that's why he's going to be my tip in the 145 at Cheltenham. We then uh, stay at Cheltenham for the 220 where I'm going with another extra tip here with a horse called the Hollow Ginge for Sam and Nigel Twist and Dave. It's currently available at 10 to 1 and I'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here. Sky Bet offering five places on this race. Now the Hollow Ginge, he does have uh, more um, letters, the, more he has more letters rather than numbers next to his name. Bit of a tongue twister there. But yeah, the Hollow G uh, Ginge, he unseated, he pulled up, he fell, he did all sorts last season. However, the time to catch him is, is fresh. He won two um, years ago on his seasonal reappearance 
at Worcester and then he went on to Aintree where he finished second behind a useful horse of Henry de Bromhead's called Plan of Attack. He's actually racing off the same mark tomorrow which is the lowest mark he's raced off for some time with a mark of 137 and that looks like to me a very good mark for him and he's just fallen down the weights and even last year you can say his first run fresh was uh, when he finished fourth in the Labrooks Trophy at Newbury where um, he um, yeah, when, when he bumped into the likes of Cloth Cap and I Right that day, and Cloth Cap is going to have to give him like twenty pounds tomorrow. He, he's much better off at the weight, the Hollow Ginge. Yes, like I say, he is a bit of a quirky customer, but he has always promised to to run some good races in some decent events. And I just think tomorrow he's still a little bit overpriced. I um put him up on the in the saddle podcast last night. I think he was about twenty to one at the time. I put him up on my Betfair uh, challenge column as well. So. Yeah, I, I do think he's got good credentials in this race tomorrow. And if things fall right for him, I do think he's a bit of value here. He's well treated. The yard are in good form. A lot to like about the chances of the hollow gyms tomorrow. I think he could potentially go off a little bit shorter. So for me, he's going to be my tip in the 220 at Cheltenham. We then head to Newbury for the long shot to the 235. Uh, well, I'm going to go with um, Miranda here for Sylvester D'Souza and Andrew Bolden. Currently available at 12 to 1. Could potentially go off bigger tomorrow. However, I just think Miranda has been slightly underestimated here. Now, he hasn't been at his best this season. It's quite clear to see to see that. And it looks like to maybe some people that he has regressed, which he could ultimately do. But I can't let him go off at 12 to 1 uh, for this race tomorrow. He won it uh, back in 2018 uh, when he had conditions in his favour. He's going to have conditions in his favour again tomorrow. This season, he's barely run on heavy or soft ground at all. It's been on good ground. Don't think he was uh, suited last time in a in a decent race at um, at Newmarket over two miles. I think this trip is more up his street. And even though yes, he isn't well treated tomorrow at the weight, taking on the likes of Siskani, who won a competitive handicap at a Newmarket. I'm not sure if the form really at Newmarket amounts up to much. Even though Siskani, he did do it very well. And even though he is well in here and he's better on ratings and he's getting weight, I just think that Miranda, he, he, he shouldn't be discounted here. And Andrew Bolden's team, the last few days, they've been going great guns. And I just think that this horse, with conditions in his favour, a course and distance when I think this, the trip will be more suitable for him. I just think he's got a lot of things uh, in his favour tomorrow. And I think he could potentially cause an upset in this race. And that's why I'm going to recommend him to win on the nose at 12 to 1. I think that's not a bit of a, of a bad price there. And I think he could potentially drift off to maybe even 16 20 to 1 tomorrow if he was uh, really unpopular i could see him drifting out further so yeah miranda is gonna be my long shot of the day in the 235 at newbury and i think he'll run a big race there we then go to the nap of saturday which is going to run in the feature race at doncaster it's the Verton futurity uh, trophy stakes a 315 and i'm going to go here with bayside boy for David Egan and Roger Verin, currently available at 5-1, to one, which I still think is fair value, and I'm going to recommend a one-point each-way selection here. Now, I really want to take on this favourite Luxembourg. You could probably clip this up uh, if he wins this race tomorrow or if he goes on to win the derby, but I just think he's far too sure in the betting on what he's achieved so far. Yes, he was an impressive winner of the Bereford Stakes at the Cara, but honestly, I don't know what he beat at all in that race, you know, and just the yard form of Aidan O'Brien it's not been uh, great at all they've only had four winners from like 60 runners or something in October they've just really not performed to, to the level we know they can do this year obviously they had St Mark's Basilica and Snowfall was good for them in, in her peak but apart from that they've not had too many um, superstars Smother Earth has also done good but they've not had too many uh, uh, top horses this season to go to war with and their juveniles have been fairly disappointing apart from the one that won the Cheveley Park so I do think that Luxembourg he's there to be shot at and he's too too short in the betting for me even though Aidan O'Brien does have a good record in this race and I just think Bayside Boy could be the answer for this race tomorrow I was really impressed by the way he hit the line in the Dewhurst I just don't think he was suited by the dip because if you go back and watch the replay he's staying on really strongly and I just think the extra furlong Will really suit him. I think returning to this uh, track is a massive positive for him as well. He won the Champagne Stakes here on his penultimate start, beating Reach for the Moon, who was all the rage at the time. Obviously, at the time of that race, we, we thought, oh, like, you know, it was probably not very good. But Bayside Boy 
showed to me, I think, another another level of ability by finishing third in the Dewhurst, Dewhurst even though he did finish behind Native Trail, who undoubtedly has been the most exciting juvenile colt uh, this season. And I just think the likes of Royal Patronage tomorrow, it, you know, like even though he was a good winner last time out by uh, battling back to beat Caribus, I just think he's going to set it up for our lad tomorrow, Bayside Boy. Imperial Fight is probably the horse that I'm scared about the most, but... For me, I just think Bayside Boy here, I, I really can't see him finishing outside the first three. And I just think this track will suit him. Roger Varian's team are going well. I just think he can take the scalp of Luxembourg tomorrow. And for me, uh, yeah, I, I think Bayside Boy will win um, the 315 at Doncaster. So, yeah, that's then the five tips for tomorrow's racing. Let me know in the comments box below what you'll be back in tomorrow. If you're still enjoying these videos or only recently started uh, watching them make sure you subscribe here to my youtube channel at lucky loaded 15 if you want to follow me on social media twitter is the only place you can do so where my handle is at lucky loaded 15 and if you want to find out a little bit more about myself my website is www.chrisloaderacing.co.uk so please come responsibly hopefully we can have some winners for you tomorrow and we'll be seeing you soon <laughs>